Your Vote 2022, the final hour of voting in central Indiana. The polls close at 6 p.m. We are watching several key races, including a possible shift in balance of power on Capitol Hill. Plus, challenges at the ballot box. We have live team coverage tonight. Let's begin with News 8's Camilla Fernandez. And you found long lines in Broad Ripple today, Camilla. <laughs> Drew, Phil, that's right. But now, as you can see, the line isn't very long. But about five to six hours ago, this place was jam-packed. People would tell me it'd take about an hour just to get through the entire process. Now it just takes about 10 minutes. So even though we had to wait an hour, it didn't really feel like an hour because um, you just got to sit there and be with your neighbors. Many decided to come out to the voting center at Broad Ripple High School and stayed despite the long wait time. I had heard some people say that there are a few other locations that were much shorter, but already being here in line already halfway through, I was like, eh, I'll just stay. And Jessica Fisher lives close to the school and like many others, she wants to bring change. Voter turnout. Isn't, hasn't always been the best, especially in this area. And so I felt like, you know, I just needed to show up and do my part. And, you know, you can't complain if you don't have your voice heard. The whole situation in the country right now is just so crazy. I want to make sure that I get my uh, vote in so that hopefully the people that I voted for get in office. C.J. Haldeman is one of many who cast their ballot at Hinkle Fieldhouse. He says the voting process at around noon was quick and easy. I'd say it's about the same as last year, really. It's surprisingly fast. I, I always surprise how quick we get through. The whole people saying that the voting's rigged or that stuff has happened like that, it's just obviously not true. At JTV Hill Park, voters Tuesday morning said the process only took about five minutes. It's a lot easier than it was the last time. The mail-in ballots was kind of, you know, I wasn't sure about the mail-in ballots, but this system they got now, pretty proven. We felt to realize that the local affects us. Uh, what we do locally affects us statewide, statewide affects us nationally, so... Uh, that's the way to look at it. Doors close at 6 p.m. So if you haven't voted yet, you still have time. Camilla Fernandez, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook. All right, Camilla, thank you. Turning to I-Team 8, and the Secretary of State's voter maintenance project is getting a workout today as the state is cracking down on old voter registrations. I-Team 8's Richard Essex found out firsthand this morning. Richard. Well, if you got a postcard in the mail from the Indiana Secretary of State's election division that was filled out properly, delivered to your house, you didn't have to do anything. Well, I found out that mine had been returned to the Marion County Board of Voter Registration. And so when I went in to vote this morning here at this polling center on South Meridian Street, found out that my, um, I was inactive. So I went down downtown to find out what happened. If the postcard comes back, we mark you inactive. <laughs> Inside the Marion County Board of Voter Registration Office, the phones are literally ringing off the hook. Many of those calls are generated by the Voter Registration List Maintenance Project, which requires every county in the state to update their voter registration information. Earlier this year, every voter in the state should have received a non-forwardable postcard to verify their address. If the postcard is returned because the person moved, then a second one is sent to the address on file with the post office. If the second postcard is returned, Cindy Mowry of the Mary County Board of Voter Registration explains what happens. We mark you inactive and then we'll put check address verification when you come to the polls. Here's how it works. Poll workers scan the voter's government ID. If the registration is inactive, the poll inspector is called to verify the address of the voter. I was not asked to provide any additional documentation of my address and was allowed to vote as normal. As of this morning, Mowry didn't have an exact number of the people listed in Marion County as inactive. I was told by a poll worker this morning there have been more than a handful of inactive voters come to the voting center on South Meridian Street. Mallory said the calls that are coming into her office are from poll inspectors trying to work out voter registration and address issues as the voter is waiting. If an inactive registration voter does not vote in a general, special, or primary election by January of 2025, their registration will be canceled. 
After January 2025, a voter's registration will be canceled, but it will not be removed from the statewide voter registration poll. Now, that, But if you decide you're going to vote after that date, you're going to have to prove to the, the poll inspector that you still live at that address. Now, if you did not receive one of these postcards and you want to make sure that you're that you're active and ready, and ready to vote, you can go to the Secretary of State's Election Division website and print off one of their postcards, fill it out, and mail it in. From the south side of Indianapolis, Richard Essex, Wish TV, I Team 8. Good to know, Richard. Thank you. Our team coverage continues with News 8's Garrett Bergquist and Danielle Zolkowski. There are Republican and Democratic watch parties. So let's start tonight with Garrett and the GOP. Garrett. They're still setting up here at the Republican Party watch party. We expect guests will probably start filing in within about the next hour or so. One of the top races that we're watching tonight is the race for Secretary of State. That turned into an open seat this year. Republican Diego Morales defeated incumbent Holly Sullivan at the state Republican Party convention in May. Since then, he's faced questions over his views of the 2020 election, his military service, and the fact that he was fired from the Secretary of State's office earlier in his career. Career. He also faces accusations of sexual misconduct by two separate women. He denies those claims. Libertarian Jeff Moore and Democrat Destiny Wells have tried to capitalize on those controversies. Wells in particular got a surge of donations in the final few months, though Morales maintains an edge overall. It's worth noting, Sabato's crystal ball moved this race to toss-up last week. We expect we will hear from the candidates in this race at some point later on this evening. We also expect to hear from the state Republican Party chairman sometime in the next few minutes. We hope to bring that to you in the next hour. Live in Indianapolis, Garrett Bergquist, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook. Thank you very much. Let's bring in News 8's Danielle Zolkowski now live at the Democratic Watch Party. Danielle. Well, people are just starting to trickle in tonight as polls are still open for this Democratic Watch Party here in Indianapolis. Now, we'll be following one major race tonight, which is the Marion County Prosecutor's Office. Current incumbent Democrat Ryan Mears is facing off against Republican Cindy Carrasco for that seat. Now, she has run on a platform of violence reduction and public safety. Now, through this campaign, she has pushed for that violence reduction through community and police partnerships and strict prosecution. Mears and other county and city Democrats have noted violent crime is down in the city this year. He is running on a platform of focusing on serious crimes while building community trust. Now, as people start to arrive, we will bring you more from the Democratic Watch Party here in Marion County. Live in Indianapolis, Danielle Zolkowski, Wish TV, wishtv.com, and follow us on Facebook. Danielle, thank you. Defending your vote, a grassroots organization is taking up the duty, bringing out what it calls election defenders, making sure last minute campaign workers and others follow the rules. But organizers tell News 8's multicultural reporter Katira Winfrey the work runs much deeper than that. Kalmasin says the focus today is on election defenders, but all year they work to diversify civic engagement. They say it's important for you to know your rights at the polls, but also how to advocate for yourself when it comes to talking to legislators who don't often look like you. Voting, it's a civic duty that's worth protecting, especially if you ask members of the grassroots organization, count us in. We look at voting and civic en or really civic engagement holistically like Today, it's really important to vote. That's a huge part. But we also want to make sure that people's voices are heard at all levels. The agency has been working hard leading up to Election Day with surveying sites and volunteering with phone banks. It's all part of the efforts in Indianapolis to help voters understand what's on the ballot, specifically with the National Asian American Women's Forum of Indiana to support Asian but also black voters. The flyer said, hey, auntie, did you vote? But that's the feeling you're calling fam just to show up. And I think for the community, by the community type of initiatives like that, just motivate people so much more. With Election Day officially here, the work extends farther than that. This round, they brought out election defenders to support efforts to the north in Fort Wayne. We're just making sure that it's a safe space for people to vote and they're not turned away. Count us in says voting for the most part went smoothly with only a few issues that needed to be addressed. So far this morning, we've had people too close to the door. Um, we've had some issues with um, violent images, unfortunately, being shown as a way to push their efforts. 
They say you can be your own election defender, know the rules, and report problems you see while casting your vote. For folks that work all day long, they may only have like 15 minutes to vote, and so they don't need anybody else interfering with that. Countess N says they also worked ahead of the election with Indiana Disability Rights to survey sites to make sure they were accessible to people who have disabilities. Reporting in Indianapolis, Katira Winfrey, Wish TV, WishTV.com, and follow us on Facebook.